Hi, and welcome to Conquering Commas Lesson 11, Switched Up Sentences. Today we're going to talk about those sentences that are in a slightly unusual order, but that good writers use to add variety to their sentences. The key here is that you're going to want to know how to punctuate sentences like this, and that's what we'll be covering today. In this lesson, we're going to review rules 1 to 10, then talk about what we mean by switched up sentences, which consist of sentences that begin with prepositional phrases, participial phrases, and dependent clauses. Lastly, at the end, we'll have a big old review. Here are the 10 rules you really should know. Series, dates and addresses, introductory words, letters, two adjectives, direct address, appositives, interrupters, non-essential clauses, and conjunctions. I wonder how well you remember these rules. Our new material for today has to do with switched up sentences. But what do I mean when I use this term? Basically, a switched up sentence is one that has an introductory phrase before the subject and verb portion of the sentence. It's switched up because it moves a phrase normally at the end of the sentence to the beginning. Here is a typical sentence in the English. It begins with a subject, we, and then a predicate sat for hours under the apple tree. In a switched up sentence, what you're going to do is take a part of the sentence and move it. You're going to put it from the end of the sentence to the beginning. So that instead of we sat for hours under the apple tree, you will say under the apple tree, we sat for hours. The emphasis is a little different in that sentence. It's almost a little bit more poetic, and you can see why a writer might make that choice. When you write a sentence like this, though, you're going to have to put a comma after the part that you so cleverly moved from the end of the sentence to the beginning. You should know that there are basically three kinds of switched up sentences. Prepositional phrases, participial phrases, and dependent clauses. We'll be talking about each one of these sentence types. Our first type are the prepositional phrases. Prepositional phrases appear at the end of a sentence in standard construction. That sentence is actually in standard construction. Look at the second example. What I've done is taken one of the prepositional phrases and I put it at the beginning of the sentence. In standard construction, comma, prepositional phrases appear at the end of a sentence. It's key when you have a prepositional phrase at the beginning of a sentence to use a comma after that phrase. It does also give kind of a natural pause when a person reads that sentence. Do you actually remember what a preposition is? Here are some typical prepositions. Oftentimes I have told my students that a preposition is anything a mouse can do to a box. It's not a perfect way of thinking about it, but it sometimes helps if you think that a preposition is something that indicates location. Speaking of mice, let's look at an example. The mouse searched eagerly for cheese in the kitchen. What we've done in the second sentence is taken the prepositional phrase in the kitchen and put it at the beginning of the sentence. In the kitchen, comma, the mouse searched eagerly for cheese. Okay, you knew that there was going to be a tricky part. Here's the deal with prepositional phrases. If a prepositional phrase is shorter than three words when it appears at the beginning of a sentence, don't use a comma. For instance, you would say, in spring we plant peas. You don't need a comma between spring and we. You don't need to say in spring, comma, we plant peas because it's only two words, it's super short, and the comma just isn't necessary. The next kind of switched up sentence that we'll study is participial phrases. A participial phrase is just a fancy term for a phrase that looks kind of verby, but it acts like an adjective modifying a noun or a pronoun. Present participles have a word ending in ing, past participles often end in ed, but can vary. Look at that first word in the sentence, and it's going to help you to figure out if that sentence is beginning with a participial phrase. Here's a participial example. 
running up the elaborate stairs, comma, he tripped. Look at that first word, running. It's a present participle. The participle begins the sentence, and so you're going to need a comma after the word stairs. That's a present participle. It's got that ing. You could see in the next sentence, there's an ed at the beginning of the sentence. It's also a participial, but it's a past participle. Tripped by his own feet, comma, he felt foolish. You can see how the participial phrase at the beginning of a sentence demands that a comma appear before your subject of the sentence. In both cases, the subject of the sentence is the word he. You're going to want to write your own sentences that begin with participial phrases because it does make your writing a lot more interesting. But beware, the participial phrase should not be far away from the noun that it's modifying. You don't want to be a person who's misplacing a modifier. I'll show you an example. Hidden in the back of the refrigerator, comma, Jamie finally found the last apple. That's not a great sentence. We're thinking that Jamie is actually hidden in the back of the refrigerator because you can see that immediately following the participial, we have the word Jamie. Look at the next sentence. It's a much better sentence. Hidden in the back of the refrigerator, comma, the last apple almost eluded Jamie's grasp. In this sentence, apple is very closely connected to the participial phrase. By the way, it's a past participle, and you can tell because it has en at the end, which is a slightly atypical form of the past participle. Our last example of a switched up sentence is one that begins with a dependent clause. A dependent clause cannot stand alone and usually begins with a subordinate conjunction. These are words that we sometimes call the awoobus words. In case you've forgotten, this is what they look like. Here are the awoobus words, subordinate conjunctions. When you begin a sentence with one of these words, you're going to have a dependent clause. It can't stand by itself. As always, an example is useful. If you don't sleep, comma, you will have trouble learning. You can see that in this example, we have a dependent clause at the beginning, if you don't sleep. You can't call that a sentence, it's not. It's dependent, it needs the rest of the sentence. But because it's at the beginning of a sentence, which is switched up, you have to have the comma after sleep. Here's the standard construction. You will have trouble learning if you don't sleep. You'll notice that in that example, there's no comma. You don't need it. The order of the sentence is standard. Here's one more example of a dependent clause at the beginning of the sentence. You probably had a teacher somewhere along the way who told you you should never begin a sentence with the word because. And that's good advice when you're in third grade. You're not in third grade. So look at these sentences, because if you begin a sentence with the word because, you're just saying, hey, this is a dependent clause at the beginning, and there will be a comma coming up before my independent clause. Look closely. Because we had a warm winter, comma, insect populations had a chance to multiply. In that sentence, the word because starts the dependent clause. Insect populations had a chance to multiply is the independent clause. And you can see in the next sentence that is in standard order, we do not use a comma at all. Insect populations had a chance to multiply because we had a warm winter. That sentence is in standard order. It doesn't need the comma. Here's a quick review of our lesson. A switched up sentence puts a phrase or a clause before the subject and the verb. A switched up sentence needs to have a comma after that introductory element. Introductory elements can be several things, a prepositional phrase, a participial phrase, or a dependent clause. Look at that first word for a clue. If the sentence starts with a preposition or a verby looking participial or a subordinate conjunction like one of the awoobus words, you know you'll need a comma in that sentence. And lastly, I just like to say, switch up your sentences. Good writers vary their sentence structure to add meaning and flow and interest to your sentences. You don't want every single sentence to begin with a subject and then move on to a verb. Switched up sentences make our writing more interesting for the reader. And dare I say it, it makes it a little bit more interesting when you're writing also. You are so close to conquering commas. 
We only have one lesson to go. Good job.